welcome back to Gapy's Garden. I'm going to be going throughout the garden. It's early morning here today in early August. And we'll show you what we've got going on. So this is the one in-ground bed we have. And actually, I think I just saw a little bunny. So we've had some rabbit problems in the backyard this year. Oh, actually, that was a bird. Um, but the bunny we had back here had babies. And I've seen at least two of the babies around. I haven't seen them in the last few days, so I'm not sure if they're still here, but they've been a little bit of a problem. So we've got some bush beans here and a couple of cabbages. That's, I think, a purple cabbage there on the back that I got from a, a friend, and I've got another one on this side. And then we've got several varieties of kale along this side. And this one here is a summer sprouting broccoli. So I've harvested the, the head in the middle, and it's starting to get some sprouts that are ready to harvest here on the side. Um, and then the rest of these are, are various kales. And then on this trellis here, I don't know if you can see that, but there's like a metal trellis here. I've got some butterfly, blue butterfly peas. I think that's what they're called. They're not doing that great. The soil isn't the best um, compared to the ones in the raised beds. So I'm, I need to start fertilizing those. And then I've got some sugar baby watermelons. And so far, I think we've only got one little baby watermelon right there. And then the rest of the bed is corn. I've got, let's see, the glass gem corn and an earth tones dent corn, then a couple Peruvian corns. And I've got some whole beans that are growing up along the outside rows. Um, and they're doing pretty good. Although this variety over here doesn't seem to be climbing much, so I'm not sure why, but it's already starting to get flowers and tiny little beans are coming out already too. So I don't know if they're gonna start climbing or not. And we've got some wildflowers along the outside, some borage and California, um, California poppies, I think they're called over here that were all volunteers from previous years. And I do have a, we do have a live cage here to try and catch the bunnies, but so far no luck. I need to do better about putting some some new food in there. All right, let's go check out the raised beds. So this is the the where I grew the onions and garlic. And the onions, I've harvested some of those. This was the yellow of Parma onions, and they didn't do as well as I had hoped. I got a few good-sized ones, but the rest are pretty, pretty tiny. Um, and then I've got a volunteer tomato here, and it looks like it might be a Berry's Crazy Cherry. Um, the way the the clusters of flowers are looking um, and we've got some pods that are just starting to come out here So I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but I grew that um, variety over in this bed last year And then I put in some cover crop Over here of buckwheat. This is I think the pink buckwheat and it's just starting to come up I've been covering it with this shade cloth here um, During the day because it's been getting really hot and then we've got some volunteers of something It looks like it might be tomatoes coming up here, so I'm not going to let those grow because they don't have enough time um, to mature. And then I had lettuce in this bed that all bolted, so I've been feeding that to the chickens. We have chives and some more borage. And I've got a volunteer bed of borage. Well, it's not really a bed, but um, just a whole kind of little area here that I let the, bo the borage grow. But this is the herb bed. Um, we've got a couple different varieties of sage here and some thyme. The thyme I bought um, because mine didn't survive the winter. Uh, but this one is uh, silver. I can't remember what, what it's called, but it's like a silver thyme. And then this one is my favorite, the lemon thyme. And then I did start this one. This is the from seed this year. This is the marjoram. And we've got, what else? This one is the variegated sage. And this Oregano, this is the golden oregano. It's kind of getting crowded by some of these other herbs. But if it's not in the sun, it doesn't turn that yellow color. So you could see those back there are more green. Um, but I need to give it some more space because some of this stuff is crowding out. And let's see, this is the anise hyssop that's going to flower here. So the bees really like that, so I'm letting that flower. And some volunteer sunflowers came up in this bed as well, and I just let those grow. So it looks like there's three of them in there. 
and the raspberries over here the golden raspberries are doing pretty good we've been getting a lot of berries but I haven't been harvesting them like I should so they're kind of I've mostly been giving them to the chickens or just snacking on them while I'm in the garden and then here's my new crab apple tree this year so I planted that in the spring and it's doing pretty good and I've got some orac I think it's orac I always get orac and um, and something else mixed up but um, I've got some of those. This one I got from a seed swap and then I started these other ones from seed. But I think the bunny has been getting in here because I keep finding the, the leaves all chewed up on there. But I've got some monster Swiss chard that I started in spring in here too that's bolting and I've been feeding that to the chickens as well. Um, but I, had, I do have this cage around here for the bunnies but I think they're, the babies are, are too small and it doesn't keep them out. And then we've got our apple tree that's just loaded with apples this year and this is the most apples it's ever had and this is a Braeburn which is self-pollinating but it says it does better with a, a cross-pollinator and this is the only year that we haven't had a cross-pollinator oh here's one that dropped so it is dropping some fruit because it's so um, loaded and this one actually doesn't I might try and eat that one we'll see um, but it, they're not really ready yet usually they're ready probably in September and this is the ricotta bed, which I showed last video. Um, but this thing is, I mean, this one is, it's about five feet tall. It's pretty ridiculous. And then the blueberries, they're almost done. I've got maybe a couple more bushes um, that still have a little bit of ripe, unripe fruit, fruit on them. And I harvested most of them yesterday. So we might get one more harvest next week. But I've picked about 25, I think, pounds off of about eight bushes. So those have been doing really well. And here's the tomatillos. So the green one here on the left was one I started late. Oh wow, there's a big pod here. Uh, that thing is huge. I've never seen a tomatillo pod that big, um, but it, I don't feel anything in it. So I'm not sure if it's pollinated or not. Um, but I don't see a whole lot of pods on there. But the purple, purple tomatillo I started later, I mean earlier, and it's got lots of lots of pods on it. So they're already breaking out of their shell, but I'm not sure they're ready to pick or not because they don't, they don't really feel like they're ready and they're supposed to turn purple, but they, they aren't really turning very purple. There's a little bit of purple blush on there, but I think they're supposed to be more purple than that. So if you've grown purple tomatillos before, um, do you think they're ready to pick? I'm not sure. And then we've got a Brussels sprout here, which isn't really doing very good. It's it's not getting very tall. It's just kind of staying short. I should probably trim off a few leaves. but um, And then this one here is the Kaolette, which is kind of like a cross between a kale and a Brussels sprout. But it's supposed to get um, little pods of Brussels sprout kale pods <laughs> along the stem. And I've tried growing it before, and it didn't really do what I thought it was going to and I've been trimming some of the bottom leaves off but I probably should trim some more. And here's a volunteer tomato and I'll have another video that I'll post of all the volunteers in the garden um, but that one is going pretty crazy. I'm not sure what variety that one is though. Here's the beehives. I've got two beehives here in the backyard and one in the front yard. And this is the squash bed that's got some huge lettuce that's gone to seed and we've got um that's actually a loofah there in the middle that I'm not sure how it's still alive but it's not doing very well I thought it was dead a long time ago but it's still still going um, but we've got a brulee butternut over here and it's got I think one I think it's just got that one there um, I don't see any more there's a lot of flowers on it but not a lot of fruit and then we've got a Burgess buttercup over here. We've got one big... I thought they were supposed to stay green, but this one looks like it's turning orange. Um, and there might be a... there's another one down here. It's kind of odd, a little odd shaped. And then the other squashes... Oh, what do we have? oh yeah, we've got delicata over here that's got a few fruits on it. So that one's looking really nice. That one's almost ready to pick. Um, but we've got 
another one there. Um, but I think I might grow more delicatas next year. And then this one is a pumpkin. I think it's a like a... Uh, I forget what kind of pumpkin it is, but I think it's a um, a nice nice pumpkin I haven't tried before that I picked up at a plant swap um, in the early spring or late spring. And then we've got our mint bed over here. I just trimmed the mint, so it's all there's not much to look at right now. But that's the lemon balm there in the corner, and the asparagus is all done and growing tall. And so when asparagus grows up, it turns into this big, like, ferny kind of a tree. And some of them get berries and some of them don't. And then we've got some volunteer. Um, this is all strawberries. So I'm just letting the strawberries kind of go wherever they want to back here. Oh, and this is the plum tree. I forgot to mention that. So we have a lot of plums on here, more than we usually get. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but they're just starting to turn color. But we've had a lot of them drop, again, probably because there's just too much fruit um, for it to support. You can see all the, the dropped fruit here. Okay, let's go on to the next bed. I'm not going to spend too much time on the tomatoes because I'm going to be doing another post on those, but these are some of the tomatoes here, and they've gone over the cage, most of them. We've got our Pellegrini beans. These are a really nice pole bean. I, I really like these. They're a very tender, kind of a kind of a wax type bean, um, but they're really good dried as well. But they grow super fast and really well. And then the Anasazi, what were supposed to be pole beans, aren't really climbing much. I mean, they are climbing a little bit, but I mean, they're, they're setting out pods before they even start climbing. So they're more of a, I think they're more of a bush bean, but um, and then we've got our companion plants. We've got this dwarf sun gold sunflower, which is a pretty cool sunflower. And then, of course, marigolds, which I always grow every year. And we've got the carrots. And the rabbit was getting into the carrots, so I put up this, this fencing around it. And that seems to be doing a good job of keeping them out. And then we have two summer squashes this year. We've got um, Costata Romanesco. And I've just picked, actually I don't, there's a few over here. But I've been picking a ton of these every, almost every day. And then we've got the Goldini over here, which has some that are probably ready to pick. But I think this might have crossed with my other zucchini last year because it's getting some green on the ends. And then over here we've got our Peter Reaper peppers. And here we have some more of those um, watermelons the sugar baby and we've got actually a pretty good sized one there that's coming out and I think that's the only fruit on those I think I've got maybe three plants planted right there and check out this Brunswick cabbage this thing is huge so I'm gonna be harvesting that maybe on Friday um, but it hadn't surprised it hasn't started splitting yet but it probably will soon I harvested its sister last week that was over there because it was splitting and this is my one Chinese cabbage that's left I had two more, but it was they got eaten up by some worms that ate the roots off. So I put some potatoes in the ground. Let me see if we can find some of those worms. I'm not sure what kind of worms they are, but um, they're supposed to be attracted to potatoes. And let's see. Actually, I don't see any. Last time I pulled these up, there were a few worms on them, but I'm not seeing any right now. Weird. Oh, there's one. You can see that right there. So what I do is I take the potato and if, once there's a lot of worms on them, I'll, I'll just wash them off. And the celery is starting to bolt. So this is a pink variety and there's a red variety in here too. Um, but I haven't really been harvesting it much. But I'll probably pull this one out that's bolted. And the cucumbers this year have just gone crazy. I've got a few different varieties. There's this one here. I don't even remember what it's called. I think that's a Boston pickling, actually. Then we've got our lemon cucumbers, which I've been growing every year. And I don't see any. Uh, yeah, I don't see any right now. But there's a Suyo long cucumber that is really that I really like that I'm growing too. But I think I've got all those harvested right now. And here's my other onions. These are the Elsa Craig, 
And these are my, actually my favorite onions to grow. Um, check out the size of this one. That thing is huge. Um, but I have quite a few, well, not quite a few, not as much as I usually grow over here. Um, but they're doing all right. Um, not as well as I usually like, but... Uh, all right, let's see. We got one more bed to show for today. Let's walk over here. This is where my cherry tomato bed is. I've also got this huge sunflower. And this one here is turned over. And I'm just waiting for the seeds to dry on that. And we'll start feeding those to the chickens. We've got some nasturtiums along this side. And this is a volunteer amaranth, and that's going to be putting out some seeds here pretty soon. More marigolds. This is actually a white marigold. I don't know if you've... I've never seen a white one before, but I got some seeds, so I wanted to give it a try. Um, they turn kind of brown sometimes. I don't know if you like this one here. So they're not really as attractive, so you got to... I try to keep those cut off um, because they're not... they don't look very good. And then we've got some zinnias in here too. This is the pink senorita, which is a really neat, a neat one that I like. And then here's another one. This is from a berry mix zinnia. And this one here, this is the Chinese amaranth, the multicolor from Baker Creek. I haven't actually eaten any of it yet, but it's it's almost too pretty to eat. But I might I might just cut off the top and then let it bush out more on the bottom. And then I have some leeks that I started in here that I'll probably be um, thinning out here pretty soon. And then I let some of the radishes go to flower so I can collect some seeds. Because I really like this, I think it's called early globe or something. But it got really big before it started bolting. This one is just starting to bolt, but look at how huge that bulb is. It's crazy. And then we've got our potatoes back here. I've got Ozette potatoes and I can't remember where... Painted Dog, I think the other one's called, um, which I haven't grown before. And then here's the compost bins, and I've got a few tomatoes growing in there that I'll show more later. So I've got four in there, and then a volunteer that's growing up along the side. And another volunteer in front of it. This must be the dwarf variety that I grew last year. Um, that's all I wanted to show for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon.